What's up folks, welcome to a new video. Uh, before I start I'd just like to say that I've been ill over the weekend, a bit of a cough, um, so if I've, there's quite a few cuts or a bit of me coughing and spluttering, I apologise in advance. I will try to edit out most of them of course, but there might be the odd one that I just can't avoid. But I'll get straight into it. Um, the Labour Shadow Health Secretary John Ashworth has dropped a massive bollock today, well maybe not today, but um, he had a conversation with a friend, the friend recorded the conversation, and that friend just happens to be a Tory, and he's passed this conversation, the whole recording, to Guido Fawkes. Uh, it's on YouTube, I'll post a link in the description below so you can all have a look at it yourselves. But yeah, there's there's some pretty damning stuff about Corbyn and, and Labour in there, and the struggle that they're having, especially in the traditional heartlands. I'll get straight into the story on the Daily Mail. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn was today savaged by one of his own shadow cabinet members who calls him a security risk in a secret recording released just two days before the general election. Labour Shadow Health Secretary John Ashworth was recorded telling a Conservative friend that the opposition leader was also proving a massive problem on the doorstep in the party's traditional heartlands. And I can fully understand this because Mansfield, where I'm from, uh, we were Labour for 102 consecutive years until 2017 when Ben Bradley took it for the Tories. Um, Corbyn is despised around this area. Uh, we're, very, we're very strong unionists around here and... We, we don't we don't like Corbyn. He's, you won't find a doorstep that's popular. Like none of the leaflets that I've had through my door from the Labour Party have even mentioned Corbyn. There's no pictures of him or anything like that because he's just you won't get through to people around here mentioning Jeremy Corbyn. Stay as far away from him as you possibly can, especially since the Brexit vote. Like 2017, the the position wasn't hardened as much, but because. Because everybody knows that he was a Brexiteer, I'm not sure if he is now, but because everybody knows he was a Brexiteer and he's gone back on that word, especially when Labour had the party conference and they decided to go with a second referendum, that was the deal breaker for a lot of people. That's when I decided that I will no longer vote Labour as long as this iteration of it exists. I don't even know what's going to happen when Corbyn goes, I'm pretty sure that they might still stay like very similar and just appoint Long Bailey or something, but that story is for another day. Um, in stunning comments released by political blog Guido Fawkes this morning, Mr Ashworth said that the leader's tortured neutrality on Brexit was proving divisive in working class leave supporting areas, which is exactly what my constituency is. Ashworth, Ashworth has since dismissed the comments made last week as a joke and banter. They probably were a joke and banter, but that's, sorry John, but that's not going to change anything here. You, you dropped a bollock. On the recording, he said that many people would switch to vote Tory and in, in enough numbers to ensure Boris Johnson won a majority. Which I think is probably right. I do think Tories are going to get a majority in this. But I don't think it could have been a lot easier if they'd have gone into the alliance with a Brexit party or if they'd have just been a bit, a bit more oomph about the campaign. I understand why they didn't. It went terribly wrong in 2017 with Theresa May and they wanted to... The message was right with Theresa May, strong and stable, but she was anything but strong and stable. So they're trying to purvey that message now in this general election without saying strong and stable, like get Brexit done, because just, just get on with things, that's what we do in this country. And I, d I just don't think it's been quite enough. You know, like Boris Johnson, we've, we've all seen him in the House of Commons, he walks all over Jeremy Corbyn in, in the House of Commons. I don't see why his campaign's been a, just a little bit lacklustre. Um, there's just been something missing from it, I think. And I, I don't think it'll cost him a majority, but it's going to make it a heck of a lot closer. Um, his, his remarks have been seized upon by Labour's political opponents, of course, or sh which are sure to cause huge damage to the party just days before the election. The latest opinion poll shows a gap between the two main parties narrowing to just seven points, threatening to de deprive Boris Johnson of a majority that would allow him to get Brexit done in January. They continue to exchange blows today amid the fallout from yesterday's row over the treatment of a small boy forced to lay on the floor of a hospital floor while awaiting treatment for pneumonia. A photograph widely circulated on social media showed Jack Wilmot Bar, Willimont Bar, lying on a pile of coats to keep warm while he waited for a bed for treatment for suspected new pneumonia at Leeds General Infirmary. Uh, Boris Johnson waded into Mr Ashworth's comments saying, John Jonathan Ashworth is saying what hundreds of Labour candidates and millions of voters are thinking. Jeremy Corbyn is unfit to be PM because he is blocking Brexit. 
I don't know about blocking Brexit, but he's definitely not helped the transition. Like we should already be out, and his entire party has been a pain in the arse. He should have whipped them into line or stepped aside, one of the two. But not just that, this neutrality stance is just its not going to go down well. This Brexit is the biggest issue that we've had in this country pro probably since the war. Like the Cold War was pretty big, but that was US and Russia. Like No matter what we did, it didn't really matter in that case. The World War, that really mattered. And then this really mattered. Like it's something that the entire nation, not the entire nation, but a vast majority of the nation is quite deep into like we've learned a lot of things about our politicians and and the way politics is really is in the last three or four years and it's been eye-opening to a lot of people and they've engaged a lot more it's something that the establishment has said for as long as i can remember that they wanted people to be more involved in politics and then we got more involved in 2016 and they spent three years trying to overturn a vote because of it it's kind of ironic um, where was I? In the recording obtained by Guido, the Labour candidate for Leicester South is heard saying the civil service machine would move pretty quickly to safeguard security if Mr Corbyn entered number 10. He is heard saying outside of the city seats, if you're in small town Midlands and North, it's abysmal out there. They don't like Johnson, but they can't stand Corbyn and they think Labour's block Brexit. And that's a perfect line, that last one. They don't like Johnson, but they can't stand Corbyn. Because I'm in that position. I, I wanted to vote Tory. I was interested in the Tory party conference this year for, for the first time ever. And I wanted to vote Tory because of Boris. But he came back with that deal. And it was just bloody shocking. There was not enough different about it to warrant everybody getting behind it, in my opinion. I understand why people did. They wanted to just get it over and done with. But... It should have been big changes from Theresa May's deal, or just go with no deal. I think that was that was the only option. I think that's where we're going to end up anyway through this transition period. You can't get a trade deal done within ten months unless you're really, really willing to sacrifice something to get it done in ten months, and that would mean giving away something that we've just got back from leaving the EU. Like I'm, I'm more thinking towards the fishing rights here. I don't think. The e I think the EU will hold out, sorry, just just for things like fishing rights, like Macron will hold out. Macron, and then you've got the Rutter in, in Holland and that, they will hold out for fishing rights as long as they can. Spain will give us problems of it, Gibraltar. There are, there are many, many problems to come yet. Um, despite the get Brexit done motto, it's either going to be done in 10 months with no deal or it's going to drag on for at least two or three years i think because they'll have to extend it to get the entire trade deal done otherwise we're at a massive deficit you can't you can't put a time limit of 10 months on trade negotiations to actually get it done and get out unless you've got the full intention of going for no deal otherwise that might shape the eu into it but they're a slow moving organization and 28 different parliaments are going to have to ratify this trade deal i know it helps that we've got like similar we've, we've traded together and we've, we're at tariffs for so long that it helps we've got a good starting point but that's too much in it's still too much in 10 months 28 parliaments only one parliament's got to have a problem with that and we're gonna have to delay which is where i think it'll end up the article goes on to say um i don't think there are long-term games for the tory party but i can see them going tory this election and if labor ever got its act together they will presumably presumably fall black fall back jesus christ yeah, I, I'm not so sure of that. I think Labour might have lost quite a, a lot of the heartlands. I think middle class graduates, Romanian people, Labour's probably doing well among, but not in the big, not in big enough numbers to deny the Tories a majority. And that's true because they're just sort of getting more votes in the constituency that they've already got in London, etc. That's why the vote share is going up. They're not necessarily taking ones in marginal seats where they need them in the Midlands and Wales and the North. I think they're still. They've still lost a bit since 2017 in that area. Uh, Mr Ashworth's remarks echo what Labour sources have told Mail Online regarding Corbyn's unpopularity with voters. Uh, yeah, he is the most unpopular leader I've, I've ever seen in my life. Theresa May was unpopular, but she, now that she at least she stepped aside and got out of the way, Corbyn hasn't. He's, he's still there and Labour are going to lose, lose another election because of it. 
Uh, confronted by his remarks on the BBC's Victoria Derbyshire show today, Mr Ashworth said it was banter with a friend. Of course it were, mate, but unlucky. You got your friends, not really your friend. Uh, we're having banter with each other. We're joking around. No, I don't mean it because I'm joking around with my mate because he's a Tory and he's saying things. If you leak it to Guido, of course it makes me look like a right plonker. But it is not what I mean when I'm winding up a friend trying to sort of pull his leg a bit. I don't think you were joking, Mr Ashworth. I think you knew. You got it spot on and you know you did. Um, John Ashworth claimed the recording was leaked by Tory activist Greg Baker, former chairman of Canterbury Conservative Association. It's a shame because I thought he was a friend. He's clearly not a friend. Yeah, that's... yeah. I won't be having friends that leaked my private conversations, mate. You want to get rid of that one? Later on Politics Live, he suggested he was trying to do the Alex Ferguson thing, psych him out, a reference to my new manager, former manager. He apologised to the Labour Party and admitted he looked like an idiot after the recording was released. Yeah, you look like a right bloody plonker, mate. You got it right first time. But let's be honest, he's not the first Labour MP to have doubts about Jeremy Corbyn. They did try to oust him already and the Socialist Workers' Party wouldn't let him go. Um, he knows that the Labour Party don't have the right leader at the moment and they might not get the right leader next time, unfortunately. This charade of... Labour being for the middle class, middle upper class London elite is a trend that could continue if they put another one of them fucking idiots in power. But anyway, that's it for today, folks. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Take care, folks.